All right. So this whole Bastion X-ray thing has developed a lot further. We've not only realized a way to find Bastions around 500 blocks away, but there's also some other tricks we've found. Uh, so I want to clarify that this is, this is entirely vanilla and uses no mods at all. Everything can be done exactly the same on a vanilla client. Um, the sodium version that we are all using limited entity distance to only 128 blocks rather than the vanilla, t vanilla entity distance of like 800 blocks. Um, so that's been fixed and there's a link in the description with the fixed sodium. Um, so we found out that using vanilla or this patch of sodium let us, lets us see bastions from over 500 blocks away, which obviously changes the viability and effectiveness of this whole idea by a large margin. Um, most of the tricks used to find the bastions and identify false positives are identical to my first video. So if you haven't watched that yet, um, I won't be going over the same tricks again. So go watch the first video for context and come back. Um, so the new tricks we've found let us not only find an exact angle to travel at, to be led directly to the bastion, but we're also able to estimate roughly the distance of the bastion as well. So if we find multiple bastions through walls, we can travel to the nearest one. So I found an entity spike through this wall here, and I know roughly which way to go, which is great. Um, but a problem some runners have been facing is that the direction is too approximate, and it's hard to tell exactly which way to go. Um, Hamazon has been using a technique where instead of reducing to 30 FOV, he's been looking exactly where the entity spikes on the edge of his screen and then running along that angle. So if I look over here where the entities kind of drop down again, um, if I look back towards the spike, um, you can see the E goes from around 40 and then it spikes up to 60 here. So you'd run somewhere along um, the side of the screen here, through here. A technique I've been using is reducing to 30 FOV, seeing where the spike is on the, on one side. So I'm looking over here, entity is around nine, spikes up to 21 there. So I'll note down this angle. I guess the spike, yeah, the spikes around there. It's around the same number anyway. And then I'll look on the other side of the spike as well. So it's back to around 10 over here. And suddenly spikes here at around negative 90. So that's a difference of what, 65? Um, half that's around 30. And then uh, I'll, I guess I could demonstrate. So the difference between 90 and 155 is 60 ish. It's obviously 65, but it doesn't really matter. And then uh, you add or subtract 30 from one of those numbers, so we'll do 120, right? Um, and then hopefully if I travel at 120, be able to find a bastion. And this one's uh, quite a bit further. It's not so much further, but it is a bit further than um, the 128 distance maximum that we had to get used to. Another thing relevant to the angle difference is the higher this difference is, the closer the bastion will be. Uh, but essentially, we can estimate how far away the bastion is from the angle difference. Um, and it's just something that we'll get a feel for the more that we play, you know, high, how high the angle difference is, how low the angle difference is, uh, correlating into how far away the bastion is. So checking the angle difference in a run is relevant if there's multiple bastions around you. So if I look around, looks like there's a spike over here and there's also a spike somewhere over here. There's quite a lot of mobs over there as well though, but here's a 70, here's 70 as well. It's around 60 behind me. So if I try and find this spike, looks like it starts at around 180, and then it also starts at around 
where do I think that starts? Maybe 130. So, or negative 130. So there's a, there's a difference of around 50 at this bastion. Whereas if I look at this other bastion spike over here, looks like it spikes at around 75-ish. And it also spikes at around negative 30, maybe. So that's a difference of 100. So we've got a difference of um, 50 and a difference of 100. Um, so I'd be willing to say that this bastion over here is a fair bit closer than the one behind me. Um, difference of 100, obviously that divided by 2 is 50. Just add 50 or subtract 50, um, depending on which number you want. Uh, but if I look at 25 here, there's the bastion. Kind of hard to look to see, but honestly, in a run, this would be kind of hard to see as well. So, um, Ninja Brain has a short video on his method of bastion locating as well, where he changes his render distance multiple times, um, which I'll leave a link to in the description. It's really good for finding the exact distance to travel. Um, so that there's multiple different ways of finding bastions right now. Like if I if I drop this all the way down. Um, that spike over there doesn't really exist anymore. The spike behind me doesn't really exist. Um, but the further further we crank this, the more sensitive it is, it is to spikes. Um, yeah, but I, I suggest you watch his video for his explanation on it. Similar to his method, a bastion will obviously not be detectable at all if it's not loaded in the world. Um, this can be used to our advantage for sub-20s if we only want to play bastions in close proximity to spawn. So limiting your render distance can intentionally not show you bastions that are too far away from you. Um, so that will let you reset nethers faster. A common render distance uh, that's being used right now is anywhere between 16 and 18. Um, since any bastion that's further than 250 blocks away from spawn is probably too far um, for a sub-20 run. Another way of gauging how far a bastion is, is reading the second E number while your chunks are loading in. So the first number shows the amount of entities that are currently uh, within the field of view, um, whereas the second number shows the total number of entities in the entire world. Um, the relevance of this is that as soon as a bastion is loaded into the world, obviously since a lot of piglins have just been summoned, the total entity count will suddenly increase. Whereas if entities are spawning naturally, it's a relatively slow, steady increase. Um, now the immediate issue of this trick is that chunk loading is entirely unique to every world and to every player's PC. So if you have a supercomputer, your chunks will load in instantly and you might not be able to notice the spike in total entities. Whereas if your PC is slow at loading chunks, um, then it'll be very obvious when a bastion piglin chunk has just been loaded. So if the spike happens early into the chunk loading, then a bastion is near. But if the spike happens very late into the chunk loading, then it's likely a bastion is too far away for you to bother finding for a sub 20 pace run. So ordinarily we're looking at the first E number, but in this case we'll be looking at the second E number here after the slash. So if we look at the second E number, it's slowly steadily increasing. I mean, slowly is relative here. Uh, it capped out at around 79, now it's at 85. Um, and then you have to remember that the mob cap is 70, so, you know, it's, it's barely above 70. It's still slowly climbing, there hasn't been any sudden spikes. Um, so it's safe to say that there's no bastion nearby. And if we do this, um, this shows all the entities that are in the world right now. You can see there's no, you know, string of piglins here. Um, most of the you know, additions to the mob cap have been striders. There's a whole lot of striders that have spawned in, and that's why the second E number is quite high.
Um, but yeah, no uh, fast spike meant that there was probably no bastion around. Now, again, looking at the second E number, not the first E number. You see it's climbing, climbing, and it suddenly spiked up to 70, spiked up to 90, and now it's spiked up to 120, 150 now. It's really climbing a lot faster than the previous world was. Um, it's up to 170 already. And around this time, um, the previous world, you know, the, the second entity count was um, not very high. If we do this, you can see there's a lot of strings of piglins here. So the, these strings of piglins just mean, um, you know, a whole lot of piglins were loaded in at once. And that, that's what will cause these uh, entity count spikes. So watching the second entity count number and kind of gauging the behavior of it is really good for knowing um, how close a bastion is before you've even looked for exactly where it is in the wall. Uh, people have been wondering if we can find fortresses with this, and the answer is no for a, no uh, for a range of reasons. Um, the main reason is that fortress mobs are not loaded in during chunk loading. Fortress mobs, uh, they spawn like normal and they contribute to the mob cap just like everything else. However, what we can do is look in quadrants where bastions are not, as that could mean that there's a fortress in that quadrant. So basically, we'll find quadrants that have bastions inside them, and then go to the quadrants that do not have the bastions inside them to try and find a fortress. Uh, there's no promises with this. Um... As quadrants that contain basalt biomes have a chance to have no nether structure at all in them. So be wary of basalts and just avoid them in general. However, if you see a quadrant with no bastion and no basalt, then you have a good chance of finding a fortress there by process of elimination.